And good evening and welcome to Liberty Under Attack Radio here on the Freedom Phalanx Radio Network. That is FPRNRadio.com. Today is March 13th, 2016, and I'm your host, Shane. The website is LibertyUnderAttack.com. With me are my co-hosts, Stan and Danny. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. It's a pleasure as always. How are we doing? Um, about halfway done through my first beer. <laughs> yep. And as usual, mm. listeners, uh, uh, the the when I ask Danny how he's doing, it's always an update on the buzz. So you, yes. you did figure it out already. Cause that's the most important thing. <laughs> yep. uh, his his well being doesn't matter. It's about the beer that he's on. Yep. <laughs> Stan, how about you, man? I'm doing good. Doing good. Midgets. How do they do it? <laughs> right on right on so uh is there anything you guys like to discuss before before i move forward anything uh interesting or uh unreal happened this week no but he uh stan has brought up an interesting question i've always kind of figured tried to figure out how really 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 fat people have sex <laughs> fair enough yeah uh. yeah it's an interesting, uh, interesting uh, thought experiment. So, uh, you listeners, up, uh, you can ponder that after the show. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I guess there was there, there was one thing. Uh, uh, Donald Trump was actually here in Bloomington today. I was uh, on the way home from Southern Illinois from uh, doing some camping and some riding, and um, yeah, I drove. I, I didn't actually know about it because I was like disconnected from like everything, which was really nice. I'll tell you that much. But uh, yeah, I pulled through and I was like, oh, okay, I guess Donald Trump's here today. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was. Uh, that wasn't really that exciting. There are a lot of I think there are as many protesters as there were like Trump supporters, which really doesn't surprise me. But uh, I will say though, it's it's really really hilarious to watch uh, these little so these little socialists go uh, up in arms over Trump being in Bloomington. Uh, all over my fascist book news feed, I saw I mean people that have never talked about politics before ever. Uh, I, I'd, I'd see like one like uh, when Trump would say something really outrageous, someone might post something like, "Oh, Trump sucks," but like all day today, my newsfeed has just been really, really dumb shit. And the the problem I have, like uh, I I I cancel my voter registration. I have no reason to care, but uh, I guess it's it's interesting to watch. I mean, there are plenty of things that Trump has like done bad in his life, like donating to the Democrats and uh, at, at, and running for Republican, and also like failing uh, b uh, failed businesses and such, socializing the loss on the taxpayers. But they don't actually go after anything meaningful. All of the signs I saw were like Trump's a racist. Like that, I think that's all that these people can conjure up in their in their. I guess they they really don't critically think all that much, and that's just the easiest way to, I guess, attempt to discredit somebody. So it was pretty, uh, it, it was pretty interesting. I posted a status uh, when I got home. Uh, <clears throat> You're no better for supporting a socialist than the Trump supporters are for supporting a fascist. Both believe that a small minority of human beings have the right to violently subjugate others. Both are enemies of freedom. And uh, yeah, I was not really surprised that uh, no one. Like that post, not that I, not that I needed it, but it's just kind of a, kind of an experiment. But yeah, people didn't like that. But anytime uh, anyone else was posted about Trump, uh, yeah, people kind of went all up in arms about it. So uh, yeah, I guess it's kind of what you would expect. Uh, any thoughts on that? Well, as I've said before, I think Trump's going to make America great again. It's going to make the show great again. Um, <laughs> and all those liberals with their safe spaces and all that shit can um, they can get on a giant ark and have it sunk. <laughs> oh, I like uh, I like Danny. Stan. <laughs> me. Um. Yeah, it's just a kind of a showing of the politically illiterate, you know, going about and uh, holding up signs. Yeah, signs and, change things. Oh yeah, yeah. They they definitely do, and it's also interesting. Uh, and like it, it kind of started like a shit storm of like we you guys got to make make sure you go register for vote or register to vote so you can go vote for Bernie, uh, because uh, you don't want Trump in office. And uh, so yeah, I had fun posting the cancer your vote registration page on a lot of people's posts and unfollowing it because I don't want to. I've tried like I, I I if people if if socialists actually have well, fascist socialists or fascists have legitimate arguments, and the first thing that come like it comes to is like ad hominems, or if it doesn't come to that, I'll sit there and talk to them, but. That's always what happens. It's 
always what happens, and they have no, uh, there's no rational arguments coming from their side. And I've told them before, and I'll tell them again. Feel free to call into the show. We'll talk about it. Uh, before we move forward, I'd, I'd like to mention the Cancer Voter, Registra Voter Registration page. It's actually getting a lot of traffic now, which is good. I'm guessing it's because of the uh, the uh, Carnival uh, Sideshow Circus, known as the uh, uh, these uh, these elections. Uh, so if you're getting fed up with it, uh, consider canceling your voter registration. Just go to tinyurl.com forward slash cancel voter. Again, that's tinyurl.com forward slash cancel voter. There is a PDF up there with 39 states. I actually went through uh, all 50 states, like their statutory and administrative code, and I found the citations for you, so you didn't have to. All you have to do is go there. It tells you exactly how to do it, and you can do it it's just pretty, 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 uh, pretty easy and uh, take a step forward uh, in strategic withdrawal. The number to call is 218-895-3818 or on Skype at FPRN Radio Live. If you have a question for our guest this evening uh, or want to uh, join in the conversation, please do give us a call. Uh, we'll also be watching the chat available at fprnradio.com forward slash listen dash live. So feel free to post your questions there as well. Liberty Under Attack is covered by a BIPCOT, no government license, which allows reuse by anyone except for governments or their agents. Learn more at bipcot.org. Instead of going through the, the normal ways that you can support this broadcast, I, I actually thought of a, a new way to help you, help you get paid uh, for supporting Liberty Under Attack. Our sponsor, Audible, uh, which I used to promote a lot, uh, will pay LUA $15 for everyone who signs up for a free trial through our affiliate link, audibletrial.com forward slash Liberty Under Attack. That being said, here's the offer I have. For everyone you have signed up through that link, uh, again, that's audibletrial.com forward slash Liberty Under Attack, including yourself, I will give you 50% of the money. There's no limit, so you could definitely make a decent amount of money uh, while also supporting the show. Uh, to sweeten the daily even more, every person that signs up also gets a free audiobook download. And there are some great books on there. There's some Rothbard, some Mises, some Menger, a lot of good Austrian uh, economics there, and uh, also some, uh, some philosophy uh, that Ayn Rand's on there as well. Uh, after you have someone sign up, just shoot me an email, uh, shane at libertyunderattack.com, or shoot me a message on Facebook, and uh, we can coordinate. Again, that, is, that link is audibletrial.com forward slash libertyunderattack. Uh, feel free to email or message me with any questions. So, yeah, get paid for supporting us. With that said, let's get on with it. Tonight's broadcast uh, will be the ninth edition of the Direct Action Series. Unlike the political means, which requires subjugation before those who claim to be our rulers, the economic means provides you with the ability to take the initiative yourself in creating the freedom you so desire in your life. Tonight we'll be re-examining two subjects we covered with Nick Hazelton in January, namely the trivium and nonviolent communication. As I mentioned during that interview, the, the Trivium is a terrific tool to help acquire and vet knowledge, and nonviolent communication could possibly assist you in your personal interactions. To cover those subjects, we'll be joined by Daryl Becker of Voluntary Visions. Uh, so, Daryl, welcome to Liberty Under Attack Radio. How are you doing this evening, sir? Hey, Shane. I'm doing great. It's so awesome to be on your show. Right on, right on. So, uh, why don't you uh, tell the listeners a little about yourself uh, and, and what you do? Well, I happen to be a licensed acupuncturist living over on the big island of Hawaii. And I happen to be a professional podcast. I go on a variety of podcasts and other radio shows and things. I happen to often speak on these topics that you just mentioned, the trivium method and nonviolent communication methods. That's often frequently what people interview me on, though I'm often proficient in speaking on other topics as well. Right on, right on. So uh, I guess just uh, just real quick, uh, how'd you come to libertarianism? Uh, what was your uh, your path in a few minutes or less? <laughs> yeah, my trajectory. I started investigating a lot of interesting things when I began my medical studies. I found out that there was an official version story of things, and then there was an effective story <laughs> of how things actually worked medically speaking. I found out that there were a lot of hidden things going on and. When I began studying other disciplines and other types of sciences, I found it was like that for everything I'd look into. There was an official version that would be like high school and college, widespread news, widespread media version. And then there would be actual reality, which would be obviously calling some of those conclusions into question. And as I went further and further, I just was realizing there's a lot of messed up situations here. The world is in trouble. What am I going to do? And I was still thinking in the terms of perhaps if there could just be a better voting system, perhaps if there could just, you know, have more force and coercion go on, you know, that would really throw things back into balance. This is when I lived back in Vermont. I moved away from Vermont in 2008 to here to Big Island of Hawaii to do various things needed for my medical license. And 
I happened to just suddenly have high speed internet, which I didn't have in Vermont. And I very quickly got attached to a variety of podcasts, including the Corbett Report over mm -hmm. there in Western Japan. And from there, I, I catapulted into such as uh, GnosticMedia.com. I went into the Peace Revolution podcast over at TragedyAndHope.com. That's pretty much where I began my studies of the Trivium Method. And eventually I came upon other methodologies, such as nonviolent communication, which was presented also by voluntarist friendly people, such as Wes Bertrand over at CompleteLiberty.com. Mm -hmm. He pretty much unzipped these concepts for me, and I saw them all as cognitive tools and emotional tools. And I began putting two and two together in a variety of other ways. Basically, I, I use these tools, I would have to say, differently than, than many other proponents of them. And I'm completely proficient to talk about those things. <laughs> All right, right on, right on. So uh, tell us a little about uh, Voluntary Visions. That right now serves as my portfolio of my appearances on various podcasts. I'm working to get my own productions up and going. I had some technical difficulties and slowdowns and such. But for the most part, I drop my own productions that happen to touch on various topics, though often does you know, go back to the trivium and nonviolent communication methodologies. I've done a variety of shows with Brett Vinat on the School Sucks podcast, and I really like to look into how things came to be this way, also what's going on inside of people and between people, uh, some of my major focus. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, I actually found out about you through uh, uh, School Sucks Project, and uh, we'll get more to that here when we, when we uh, get later on in the broadcast. Uh, but yeah, also also uh, through that and also Nick Hazelton, he uh, recommended after we did that broadcast with him on uh, the 31st of January, uh, he was like, you need to have him on for some of these questions because I just don't know. I, I, he's like, he give you some some great answers. So uh, yeah, that's uh, that's what we uh, that's why we brought you on. Uh, so let's let's go ahead and get into the get into the uh, trivium. Uh, so uh, uh, so what what is the trivium? The trivium method of critical thinking is relatively modern, but it comes from the ancient classical trivium, which was very attached back several hundred years ago to the church, Catholic church. And then many years before that, it certainly had attachments to the workings of Aristotle and even before that, Pythagoras. It, it goes back from some distance. But essentially, it's trivium, that's Latin, three roads meeting. That's more of a literal translation. So it's just trying to say, hey, what happens if we put these three arts of quality together? The arts of general grammar, which is essentially asking and answering substantial who, what, where, when questions. It just gets you the data, but not really the logic or not really the practical applications yet. It just is like a glossary of terms, basically. And that's the first step of the trivium is just grammar work, that of definitions. And sometimes when you go advanced, you go into etymology. What's the history of this word across space and time? How does that work? Is it a generalized word? Is it a jargon term in a specialized field? That's grammar. And then it moves on to logic, which is identifying and removing contradiction through asking and answering why questions. It's also known as understanding in the way that grammar or general grammar is essentially deriving knowledge, informal logic, the methodologies that were started with Aristotle, including the utilization of various logical fallacies that you named before with the ad hominem attack. Mm -hmm. These kind of things, it's, it's basically trying to find and isolate contradiction. Like, basically, a good way of looking at it is like a firewall for your mind and a virus scanner. So things coming in and things going out, it's at least being checked that way, and it yields you some degree of understanding. And the final concept of the trivium is known as classical rhetoric, which can include the practical applications of your knowledge and understanding or your grammar and logic. And put that together, demonstrate its practicality, now you have wisdom. If you cannot demonstrate its practicality, you do not have wisdom. <laughs> Most people, when they hear the word rhetoric, they're thinking words. And that's commonly what is the action that people are looking to. But in all practical aspects, these are a three-step computer process that we all go through with everything that we've ever learned and with most applications that we apply, both computer-wise and otherwise. It's input, processing, and output. 
which again, grammar, logic, rhetoric. And there are tricks to rhetoric as well, such as the rhetorical triangle. That's the analysis of who is the author, that's me right now. What is the message, that's these words that I'm saying. 